tying everybody up. Got it. We're going to go ahead and get started. I don't like holding people up that actually joined on time, so we'll get going. Hi, I'm Larry Jaworski, member of the town council. Welcome to the uh, first meeting of the Coastal Resiliency Steering Committee. Uh, just give you a, a quick little background here, then we'll go through introductions. Um, the Coastal Resiliency Committee uh, is an offshoot from the Climate Change Action Group, uh, which is a town council group. And uh, we realized uh, early on in our discussions that we needed to, to go down a path of uh, working diligently to come up with ideas on how to protect our town from uh, climate change and sea level rise. And uh, decided to call this the Coastal Resiliency Committee. Uh, several of you are going to be on the steering committee, which is going to be the group that oversees the overall efforts of the town as we move forward to identify uh, how we can protect our town. Uh, I just want to run down the quick list of who's on the steering committee. Mr. Jeff Foltz, who is with us, is going to serve as chair. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Wes Donovan uh, is going to be with us. Phil Fenschmidt, who's on the call. Thank you, Phil. Grant Sonderstrom and Bob Moreau is an alternate. Uh, I will be on the committee. Keith Pardick, who's also on the council and is co-chair of the uh, uh, Climate Change Advisory Group. And Dave Kimmelblatt, which will lead us Simmons and Keith Tate as alternates. That will serve as our steering committee. Once we get this group up and running, uh, you folks are gonna be on your own as a steering committee. You, Jeff will set the meetings. You folks will meet separately. You will advise the uh, Coastal Resiliency Task Force as to how we should carry forward with the plan. And just to identify for everyone, the actual task force uh, technical working group uh, that's meeting regularly to coordinate technical details and project assignments and reports to the steering committee. <clears throat> I serve on that group, as does Keith Pardick, also on town council. Holly Wall, our, our town administrator. Jay Berry, director of public works. John Castro, water reclamation plant superintendent. <laughs> Chris Jakubiak, who uh, heads our planning group. And Mr. Wayne Newton, who's our town engineer. Uh, so uh, many of those people are on board here. Um, I thank you all for volunteering to serve on this. <clears throat> we look forward to moving forward. Uh, we realize that there will be a combination of short-term and uh, long-term uh, targets for the group to work on. Uh, I will ask Jeff Foltz if you have any introductory comments. Jeff? Uh, no, not too much, Larry. I mean, I know I'm. we've talked a little bit sporadically uh, leading up to this, and I've tried to follow some of the activities that you all have discussed uh, at the town council meetings, just to kind of see where things were headed. Uh, I am interested in just, I, th I think we want to make sure, or as the chairman of the steering committee, I think we're going to care about kind of timelines and what kind of timeline we're on and making sure that we have some feel for what types of reports and how we can best integrate that stuff into activities, whether they be from town council, planning and zoning, or uh, the Climate Change Committee. Again, it, there's a lot of groups that care about this information. I think uh, we want to try to make sure that we can we can align with them and understand where the data is coming from, and then how that data might be used by some of these other groups. Got it. Thank you. And uh, as of this meeting, Jeff, I'm turning over the keys to the car on this one to you. <laughs> so you got it, buddy. <clears throat> and I see Wes, Wes has joined us. Thank you, Wes, for joining us. Uh, do any members of the steering committee have any initial questions or comments you'd like to offer? If so, um, raise your hand or speak up. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on. What I'd like to do at this point is uh, turn this over to Chris Jakubiak uh, for sort of a walk through the uh, work plan that's been put together. Chris. Hey, thanks, Larry. Okay, um, have I shared my screen properly? Can you see it? I think so. A presentation at Chesapeake Beach Coastal Resiliency Plan. Cannot see it, Chris. 
You cannot? Okay. Let me give it another try. I can see it. You can? Okay. Um, oh, what, what am I doing wrong? Wait a minute. Yeah, I see it either. I see, I see a picture of oh, everything. Here we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. What did I do? Now I lost it. I might have done that. There it is. There I got I it now. It now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. Uh, very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> Welcome steering committee members. It's great to get this group together and um, we look forward to your, your direction um, moving forward. Uh, so uh, just a brief overview. Um, first, the work is being funded by uh, NOAA, actually federal uh, agency. It's a, a pass-through grant through the state of Maryland, Chesapeake uh, and Coastal Service at DNR. So, um, the Department of Natural Resources is very interested on, in tracking this work, and, um, and they're even, you know, a, a kind of a technical member of our task force, essentially, um, as is the Critical Area Commission, who's very interested in how we handle um, you know, regulations eventually within these areas that are overlaid with so many different uh, regulatory um, uh, regimes, I guess you'd call it, uh, the critical area, the floodplain, town zoning, um, MDE's review of um, bulkhead work and shoreline revetments. And so it's a very complex uh, area of, um, of planning and engineering that uh, we're embarking on or embarking into. Um, we've already gone through the steering committee and the task force. Uh, thank you all for participating. Um, the question has come up, why do we need a plan or why do, even do a plan? And um, the, the fundamental reason is that the town is vulnerable to sea level, uh, to severe, severe flooding. We know that uh, could be a tidal event like we had recently or, or a major storm. Um, nuisance flooding is already apparent with standing water and drainage issues in many parts of uh, the coastal part of Chesapeake Beach. Um, sea level rise is projected to worsen these conditions. Uh, and that's been documented to some degree within the current comprehensive plan uh, that the town council will be taking up shortly. Um, much of the town center was constructed on tidal wetlands, uh, including the area that you're looking at uh, in this background photograph. Uh, there are residential areas at risk. Uh, streets and community facilities are, are at risk. Uh, so are drainage facilities and uh, stormwater management facilities. Uh, flooding affects large areas requiring a coordinated response. And typically when there are multiple properties and multiple, multiple interest and public infrastructure involved, uh, a publicly prepared plan is, is the approach that uh, is just kind of the fallback approach. Um, this plan provides a way of incorporating the concerns and ideas of residents, business owners, and property owners. Uh, so it creates a forum for everybody to, to put their heads together and come up with a solution that uh, is derived uh, and based on consensus. Um, and lastly, a very pragmatic reason to do a plan is that it helps us obtain grant funding from the state and federal agencies. Uh, they will look for a plan before funding improvements that will actually help the town and, and its property owners. So uh, this is a very pragmatic reason why we're doing it. Our overall approach. Uh, first, there is a, a framework document that was prepared in coordination with North Beach uh, and uh, Maryland DNR. DNR uh, Put, uh, put our group together. And basically they said, uh, if, if Chesapeake Beach wants funding for this program, it needs to coordinate with North Beach. You, both towns are very close together and we want to begin establishing in the state of Maryland an approach that um, we can replicate elsewhere. So we, we're gonna work closely with you and we're gonna ask that you work closely with North Beach. So we developed a framework with them over the preceding year, last year, a, a basic um, prospectus, you know, a study for the study. And um, 
and that was approved by the mayor and council uh, about a, you know, six months ago or so. And that's the basic approach to the study. It's been established already. Uh, it's not overly technical, but it lays out the, the kind of the, uh, the architecture of this work, which I'll be uh, touching on uh, shortly. The work implements the goals and principles of the draft comprehensive plan. Um, and that plan, generally speaking, says uh, we need to proceed with great care and concern when uh, developing within the critical area and that we have to be open to various different approaches. And the plan actually says, do this plan. And the comprehensive plan is uh, recommending that the town actually embark on this planning effort that you're engaged with now. Uh, so this project will be, um, very closely tied to the comprehensive plan at the end of the day. I mean, we certainly think it will be. We, we can't say for sure, but we think it's gonna be uh, uh, eventually an amendment to the comprehensive plan. It certainly will refine and detail some of the planning recommendations that are in that comp plan. Uh, this is what I th think of as a first generation flood resilience plan. It's, it's meant to be updated regularly uh, with ongoing monitoring. We can never figure this out in one pass and it would be the, the sort of the height of hubris to suggest that we could just come up with one basic strategy, lock it in place now and be finished with it. I suspect this will be an effort that will take uh, many decades of, of groups like yours, maybe even the members on this group will stay involved over the years, um, but this will be a continual planning effort. And so in that spirit, uh, we imagine this work being um, participatory uh, and laying the groundwork uh, so that future projects can be more detailed and even refine further what we're doing uh, this year. So there's a, a big component for public engagement too, and that's in fact required by the grant. Um, so we've created the steering committee because that's our first uh, um, means for getting input from the community. And that's you represent, each of you, uh, interest and in, in property owners that have concern and uh, about the uh, well being of the town, particularly the well being of areas impacted by flooding. Um, so the steering committee with the town council and town administrator liaisons will guide this project. Um, there will be an overall town outreach. In other words, we're going to let the town know that we're doing this, but, but also we're going to let individual um, areas know that we're doing this study and what the recommendations would be. And there, there's basically three parts of town, if we think of geographically speaking, three unique areas that are um, vulnerable to sea level rise. And we want to make sure that everybody who has an interest in the outcome uh, within each of those areas is aware of what we're doing, has a chance to impact the results. Uh, we're gonna coordinate with uh, North Beach and, and Larry Jaworski has been very closely um, engaged with the town of North Beach as they are, are embarking on the same study. Uh, and uh, we've discussed creating a dashboard uh, online on the town's website for citizen engagement, a place where we would upload all the documents and calendars and schedules and people could uh, engage with the documents there and perhaps even leave comments uh, for for us. And lastly, there'll be presentations of this plan as it emerges uh, at public meetings um, and town council work sessions. Um, our basic goals here is to build a shared knowledge base among residents, property owners, and town officials. provide information to assist people to make decisions and link them with resources, create a forum for ongoing coordination between public and private investment and the community plan, and ensure that those most impacted by flooding have a role in shaping the town's planning process, planning responses, excuse me. Those are our basic uh, goals. And uh, you know, we should return to these goals periodically, make sure we're on the right track. Um, so just some things, what we've done to date. Um, 
and I won't get into details here, but a lot of work is, has been ongoing. Much of it was done during the comprehensive plan, which just formed the kind of the baseline, uh, for, uh, developed the baseline uh, database for, for this work. Um, but we've established the extent of existing and future flooding uh, in the areas vulnerable to flooding. Now that information is gonna be refined as part of this project. We're gonna be working with a mapping um, uh, an agency that's gonna be delivering a higher, a higher resolution, more detailed mapping, but we basically know where the flooding is projected to be uh, and its extent and the depth of flooding. We have quite a bit of information about that already. Um, we've inventoried the natural resources, the land uses, community facilities, and, and the property information for all the areas that are impacted by flooding. Um, we've adopted overall principles to guide the planning. And I, and I say that I, I should put air quotes around that because um, those principles are in the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive plan has not been adopted officially yet. It's not been adopted by the mayor and council. It's been approved by the planning commission, but uh, that adoption is set for the spring. Uh, and you know, hopefully it would be the spring in April or May. Um, but anyway, there are a number of principles, basic general overarching ideas that are customized to our study area, Chesapeake Beach, that describe you know, why it's relevant to do what we're doing and what is the sort of the, the truth of what we're doing and the realities of, of what we're contending with. We've documented nuisance flooding. In fact, the town has a nuisance flooding plan, a separate document that was required by state law. And uh, that's, uh, at the town hall and is available. And we should make sure that all the members get a copy of that. Um, we've uh, scoped out the work, uh, the mapping work on sea level rise and that mapping work is underway. And, and you see here ESRGIS, that's the Eastern Shore Regional GIS Cooperative. It's, it's an agency that operates out of University uh, Salisbury University. And it's a um, nonprofit that's aligned with the state and um, you know, mostly with the university. Uh, they use a lot of student labor and uh, uh, they have a real specialty in GIS down there at Salisbury. And they're gonna be doing our mapping work uh, for us. And we've already uh, got them under contract. They're doing North Beach's work as well. And um, that work is well underway already. Um, so that's kind of the technical side. And then also, um, uh, Wayne and Jay uh, have been out in the field and they've documented the locations of, of recent flooding events and have taken zero reference to some, the extent of the flood, um, both vertically and in, in plan view and established a kind of vertical elevations. And all that information is gonna be funneled to the GIS staff too, so that their mapping is gonna be much more refined and detailed than the mapping we use in the comprehensive plan. So we're gonna have a really good technical base for making recommendations. Um, just moving on a little bit more, what will the plan consist of? This is our general outline and it's, uh, it's, it's based on the framework that I, that I described previously, but I don't wanna suggest that there's no variations in this. I mean, that's why we have a steering committee because we, we, we look to you to help us shape this work. But basically there are five parts of this whole plan. Um, and North Beach's plan will have similar, uh, the five parts just like this. First, um, flood risk assessments. And we're looking at projecting and mapping sea level rise uh, in 2030, which is practically speaking existing conditions, 2050 and 2100 as a long-term uh, assessment. Um, by the way, the variability gets much greater when we look well into the future. We're looking 20 years or 80 years out in the future. We have, we're hard pressed to make very specific concrete recommendations about something that far out. But it's the, the periods of time, the 2030, 2050, that are really going to be challenged to grapple with decisions and design ideas. Uh, two, documenting the physical, economic, and social consequences of existing and future flood events. 
And that really means, you know, what's the impact of the wastewater treatment plant or the North Beach Volunteer Fire Company and to um, Seagate uh, or to the marinas uh, or to the continuation of the town's efforts to maintain Gordon Stinnett uh, Boulevard, you know, and Kelmas Field. Very specific references to these real physical parts of town that are um, increasingly going to you know, see the impacts of, uh, of flooding. Uh, three, assessment of the resiliency of public stormwater management and the sanitary sewer infrastructure. Uh, this stuff generally lies just below the surface and it's imp impacted by uh, rising water levels, uh, both in the, in the bay and uh, in groundwater. Uh, four, assessments of solutions and strategies and five recommendations, uh, funding, funding and budgeting, okay? Those are the basic five parts of, uh, of, of this plan. Um, and I just thought that I would touch on now some basic ideas that just give some practical, um, a sense of practical you know, solutions that this group might be grappling with. Um, types of strategies and solutions. These are more the physical strategies, barriers, such as dams and sea gates, um, coastal army, armoring. Um, of course, we have quite a bit of that already, bulkheads and seawalls, and we have the stone revetments uh, that protect a number of our communities on the bay. Um, living shorelines, something the state loves and something the comprehensive plan talks quite a bit about as well. Um, you know, using existing marshes and shorelines as a, a natural process to protect the, the town. Um, managed retreat, uh, kind of the gradual removal or abandonment of past settlements. Uh, this may include moving structures to higher ground and buyouts. FEMA already has a process for this. It's, it's done nationally. It, when there's repeated losses, um, federal dollars, state dollars are made available to buy property owners out. And um, so we, that's an option as well to consider uh, long-term. I don't know, we haven't really assessed that if it's viable here, but you know, when we look at the various strategies, that's one that we look at. Um, elevating development and resilient construction. Uh, there's uh, been a lot of work on this in European cities where flooding has historically been a concern. Uh, you know, buildings can actually rise and float with the increase in the uh, water levels below them. Um, so creating kind of resiliency in the design of buildings. Floating developments, I mean, I, I don't know if this is in our future, but it's conceivable. Um, and I think that's it. Those are, I just wanted to end with sort of a summary of some basic, um, oh yeah, the, the, the general timeline, a schedule. Um, if you could for a moment, um, Yeah, just bear with me a little bit. This is a this is our schedule, and it's a schedule that has been fluid somewhat, in part because we could not get too far out in front of the comprehensive plan. We we got this work underway. It was funded by the state, and we asked them for an extension because we didn't want to be doing this particular work while the Comp planning commission was still finishing its work. So we've we've had an extension now until June of next year, 2023. You see that at number six at the bottom. Uh, so flood risk assessments, the kind of the first step, uh, that's really essentially it's been underway already, but really in terms of going public with it, engaging with community uh, and sharing our results, we're thinking more in the spring, May to July, and then documenting the consequences, the, the social and economic uh, institutional co consequences that would happen late summer into early fall. Um, then number three, assessment of infrastructure resiliency. Uh, again, first month or two in 
in the fall. Assessment of solutions and strategies, uh, a nice long period of four months, five months from October through January. Uh, and then working through recommendations, funding and budgeting, that would happen in the first quarter of next year. Um, with our goal then to use the period between March and the end of June to position you know, the town council to approve the document and, and work with the public to get a shared understanding of, of our results and, and you know, revise the plan as necessary. So um, I, I guess I was hesitating a little bit about this general project schedule because I hadn't shared this yet with Larry or Keith. Um, and this is a you know, result of the extension that was just uh, approved recently by the state. So, it's a little longer time frame, which I think is beneficial in my view, but I, I just put a little caution out there that we really haven't discussed this among ourselves yet. And that's it um, for me in terms of the brief presentation of the, the scope and the work, uh, Jeff. Thanks, Chris. Any questions? Hey, Chris, I had one. I probably have a couple, but uh, I didn't write them all down as they were popping into my head. And I didn't want to interrupt you while you were on a roll. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned that framework document at the beginning that you used to help secure, I think, the grant with from the state involved North Beach. Is that something we could get our hands on? I think that might be useful. Again, just uh, make sure, since that sounds like it was kind of a foundational document, I'd like to take a look through that. Yes, uh, definitely, uh, Jeff, and, and actually, that's one of several documents that we're assembling for the, the steering committee. Um, yeah, definitely, we'll get that out to everybody. As you, far as documents go, go ahead, Philip. No, I just, uh, Chris, are you going to make this available? You know, your uh, uh, hard copy of the presentation. Oh yeah, I'd be happy to. I sure. think it'd be good because you've yeah. got a lot of a lot of information in there that. Obviously, I didn't get it written down. <laughs> no, yeah, Phil, we'll, we'll definitely make it available and I can email it out to everybody or once we have the dashboard rocking and rolling, it'll be there for everybody to refer to and um, and hard copies are not a problem at all for us to I print. I you did a good job on it, Chris. Thank you. Uh, and Jeff, just to um, clarify somewhat, the, um, the framework wasn't necessary to get the grant. Um, okay. The framework, that work was actually funded by the grant too. It was just, okay. they gave us half the resources or a, a, a small share of the resources through the framework. The town didn't get the resources. They, they hired a third party to work with the town, the towns, both of us, uh, to do right. the, the framework. Okay, thanks Chris. Yeah. Chris, is there any relationship at all between the work that's done by this group on the map with FEMA and the critical area maps uh, insurance purposes? Um, you know, I don't know that our work will be um, changing. Yeah, there's a lot of relationship, obviously. There's, there's no doubt they're all, this is all interrelated, but this project is not intended to change the reg, federally regulated floodplain, the 100 year floodplain what this work will show is what that floodplain is likely to be in the decades ahead on account of the rising sea level. The only reason I ask it, I, I understand that part of it, okay. is that I think once you start hitting the public with it, that's going to be one of the questions uh, that you're going to get. And is, it, is there some relationship? Obviously, it should be connected because it's all, in the end, uh, the same purpose, but I, that's why I was wondering whether there was any exchange. I'm not too sure. I know how they did the last one. They used a satellite picture, <laughs> at least for our area. Right. right. That's but right. Uh, that's not too scientific, nor does it get along with what we're trying to show here. I think there is a lot of interest. Of course, where I live, there's a lot of interest in this, but I, I think anybody that's on the water, you know, we've got a real problem coming up, and I, I really uh, am encouraged by what you're doing, and the way you're approaching it. I'd just like to offer one piece of good news to the group, and that is uh, you know, one of the $64,000 questions associated with this overall effort is how are we going to pay for this? 
And uh, the good news that I want to share is the town is a recipient of funds under the American Recovery Plan, ARP. And the town is scheduled to receive uh, over the next couple of years about $6 million. It's not all going to go to this, but we will have some funds to begin to implement projects as they begin to roll out. So, you know, the question is, how are we going to pay for this? Well, at least initially, we are going to have some support through the ARP funding. Any other questions or comments? I have a procedural one. Uh, so when we, I assume you all meet as a body uh, with Jay and Wayne and folks like that, when, when the steering committee comes together, are we bound by <laughs> the, op you know, the, uh, open open record stuff like planning zoning and other folks how does i just want to make sure we're careful about uh anything we do and not get it you know i don't ever want the perception that we're trying to hide anything but i you know there, i remember when on planning zoning there was you know there was a lot of discussion about what can we share how do we share it uh not having deliberations through email so i just want to make sure i understand that framework as well Holly, I'll defer to you. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I think that we should keep all meetings open to the public and make them available. And I think that was the whole concept of the dashboard that we can have that available so that members of the public can listen in and, and view the work of the group. Okay. Anything else you want to cover today, Jeff? How frequently do you all get together? Monthly. Monthly. Yep. We can share that schedule with you. In fact, we'll share it with the whole steering committee. Yeah, because what I'm trying to think is, you know, it's probably good some some period of time after you all meet that maybe the steering committee comes together. So we uh, make sure there's enough time of things you discuss to absorb. And then maybe we keep our understand what, you know, what has come up since the last time you all met and we, if we want to give any rudder direction, we can, or, you know, give us a chance to ask questions to make sure we understand the documents that you're producing and how they might be used, at least in my mind. Absolutely. Agreed. Totally. Anything else for today, folks? Yeah, Larry? Yes, Chris. At the bottom of the agenda is a, a proposed charge for the the steering committee yeah i just thought i members might want to comment on that and change it or adopt it or reflect on it a little bit yep so you can see that on your screen right now um it, i guess my suggestion would be is take a look at this and then jeff at some point the steering committee may want to take that up as a discussion item for the steering committee yeah i agree larry and i think what once you all share your schedule, I'll reach out to all the uh, members of the steering committee and we can talk, you know, we can share some ideas on frequency and timing and how we would get together. Uh, so I'll kind of, ex folks on the steering committee, you can expect to see some correspondence, you know, after uh, I get a few other things from the committee. And that might, Holly, can you give us the uh, contact information? for at least the people on the steering committee? Yes, we will do. So as a practical matter, um, uh, the thinking is, is that as the um, task force works through the technical parts and starts drafting documents, we send it to you and the steering committee and meet with you and you have a chance to wordsmith it or to, to direct us to take on a different approach or to expand certain parts of, of the work or whatever the case may be. Um, and so we're you know, developing your localized knowledge too. So um, you know, that would have the benefit of being communicated more broadly to, to everybody else. So we are looking for you to, to steer, steer this work and um, make it your own. Yes, absolutely. One other thing I'll just add, Larry, just uh, I don't know how much 
everyone. So my background, I spent a little bit of time on planning zoning here in town. And uh, I guess just to maybe set the expectation, we will probably have, there will be times when we feel like no one cares. There will be times when we feel like everyone cares and we will certainly get, uh, there will be a vocal minority on certain aspects of it. Other people will feel left out no matter how much outreach we do. Uh, I will remind all of us, don't take it personal. I appreciate everybody stepping up and uh, agreeing to uh, participate on the steering committee with us. I think it is a serious issue. None of, I do some work in the district uh, for my day job. Uh, the regulatory hurdles that lay ahead of this uh, will be challenging and frustrating, but uh, we'll never get there if we don't start and we don't share our concerns and try to come up with some, uh, some ideas and creative solutions and ways we can fund, adapt, and planning is huge because without, without good planning, we'll never get funds. We'll never be able to sell it to the folks who really have the resources to probably have an effect on, on some of the implementation and solutions that we might have. Uh, so bear with us. Don't feel neglected if no one comments, but when the time comes, I'm sure we will have significant comments from a local minority uh, and any, you know, and we'll just work through it. That's all. Agree. Yeah. Larry, if just one more moment. Um, um, Jeff kind of alluded to his day job and I thought, boy, it'd be kind of an interesting thing for the other members to know what Jeff's day job is, <laughs> how it relates to this type of work. And I thought Dave and Grant and Phil and Wes all have very specific day jobs that make them qualified or have worked in, in fields and grants too uh, that uh, prepare them uniquely for uh, you know, contributing to this work effort. And I thought, why not just go through a quick introductions um, if, if members would just, so we all know each other a little bit better. Would that be okay, Larry? That's up to Jeff, he's, he's in charge. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'll try to be brief. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've been in the town for about 20, a little over 20 years now. I, I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy and then transitioned to the CBs in the Civil Engineer Corps. Uh, I left active duty and have worked as a owner's representative on construction, federal construction projects, probably for the last, since uh, 2000. Uh, my most recent job is with the Federal, federal Reserve Board of Governors, and we are embarking on a uh, six-year renovation project of two buildings down on the mall that are going to be down in the water table. So I'm, uh, I've spent a lot of time looking at uh, flooding, flooding concerns down in D.C. and uh, lots of regulatory hurdles because all of my work has been up in D.C. since uh, 2000. So I'm very familiar with some of the regulatory hurdles. Uh, but I love the beach. I've been down here for since uh, 2000 and uh, hope to meet y'all in a more personal way. Thanks. Just I'm not go sure around the, the table, Phil. Jeff. Yeah, yeah, go, Phil. You I got it. Phil? Oh, okay. I didn't catch that part. I'm uh, Phil Van Schmidt. I, uh, been, I've lived here at Windward Key for 33 years. I've been the president for 19 of them. <laughs> 18, I'm sorry. It's two times nine. But anyway, uh, I did do a lot of work uh, in overseeing the construction of the jetty we put here about four years ago. Uh, I've done quite a bit of work with Chris in dealing with some of the issues we have regarding flooding. Uh, I am an engineer. I was a pilot in the Air Force for 20 years. And then I worked for a contractor for another 20 what, years. What was that? I would suggest whoever's not talking, put themselves on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. No, but I was like, so I was in the Air Force for 20 years, and then I worked as a contractor for another 20 some years. I retired now totally. 
Uh, I'm no longer the president. I uh, gave that up uh, my last term. Uh, but I have done quite a bit of work around here in most of the construction that we've done, which involved the marina and doing some correction in there and actually uh, doing a bulkhead and uh, putting the riprap that we've got on the bay side. I did get involved in some water projects, which Chris uh, participated somewhat in. I had a guy come up from Florida who had written a book about it. He gave us a presentation on it. And we've, I have read quite a bit about the issues of uh, flood control in, in different publications and things of that nature. Uh, I can't think of anything else. But, uh, like I said, I'm no longer working. So that's about one of the reasons that uh, Holly and Chris talked me into it. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. No, I think it is important to do. It's some, uh, certainly a vital interest to the people in our community and I think the whole town. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure who's next up on the list. How about Wes? Hey, my name is uh, Wes Donovan. I'm, uh, I've been here 44 years. Um, well, lived and worked here for 44 years. Uh, uh, right now, I'm the owner of the Rod and Reel. And, um, you know, I really have no qualifications to be on this uh, committee other than I get to look at the water all day long. And, you know, I, uh, I, I can remember as a kid when my father was the mayor, a storm would be coming up the bay and, you know, he, um, my dad was, a, 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 he would, he would go to sleep about 11, 1130 every night. But if there was a storm coming up the bay and the floodgate had to be opened, yours truly had to go out there and crank open the floodgate when they first installed it. Um, so that's really was my uh, first time learning and dealing with flood um, and what to do and, you know, how it impacted it. You know, as a kid, I grew up behind Simmons and there used to be a fairway um, where Seagate is now. And, you know, I was talking to someone on, I think it was Thursday last week and explained to them that where they lived used to be water and, you know, the changes that have happened in town, most people aren't aware of and they take for granted um, the situation we're in right now and how fortunate we are to be, you know, living in a town that cares very much about the future and has the, um, has the foresight to start actively working on it. So, you know, I, I'm excited to uh, help out in any way I can. Um, I did have one minor question, which Chris, you might be able to answer. The, the walkability study that the town did in that group, um, the, the company that helped them do that, they put together like a, I think the package was like 40, eight pages or something. It, it could have been longer, but um, are we going, at the end of this, are we going to have that type of, you know, um, document that we'll be putting out? Is that kind of the thinking? Yeah, I think the, the, the thinking is that we'd have a report. Um, I don't know if it'd be as long as that, but it's going to be very visual. And, okay. um, and, and also parts of it will be very technical too. Um, uh, Wayne and I, um, uh, Holly and Jay and John have talked about bringing in a, an expert coastal engineer to, to, to do a deep dive and studying the recommendations that might come out of your work here so that we would be able to really uh, come out with some really specific um, preliminary designs as well as the, the broad policy about how we address this. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good, a, a good detailed report with maps and graphics and the usual. So, is it? Are we also going to dive into like uh, uh, water runoff, like uh, from Bayview Hills Ridgefield Station into the creek, and then over by um, the fire department and the treatment plant? we get to address all that area as well? 
Um, yeah, that that's those areas are in this the, our study area. Uh, um, but um, when we get to that, let's kind of revisit that. I mean, we I hadn't thought through whether we look at that runoff um, question, um, but we have talked about the drainage and runoff issues uh, in the lower lying areas closer to the water where the, you know, the, there's not height or elevation to discharge properly into the bay anymore because the water rising and the like. So um, let's, I, we should take that up. I think that's kind of the first uh, principle uh, direction from the steering committee. Um, and, and we're happy to take on something like that. And so I, I'd like to refer that to, to, to Wayne and Jay uh, as we go along, have their thoughts on that question. Thank you, guys. Sure. Dave, are you on? Yeah, hi, I'm Dave Kimmelblatt. I'm the regional property manager for TM Associates Management, and uh, we manage the courtyards of Fishing Creek uh, on Gordon Stinnett Avenue. And uh, we've been on board with uh, Southern Maryland Tri-County Community Action Committee, the owners, since August of 2020. So I appreciate everybody having me on, on board here. And uh, I'm, I'm certainly unqualified to talk about uh, flooding and, and that type of thing. I'm a property manager, but we, we do have a vested interest in, in sea level rise and in that the property is located right on the water, as you all I'm sure know. Um, I will interject that my daughter is the flood plain coordinator for Charleston, South Carolina. So anything I don't understand, I'll, I'll call her after the meeting and she can explain it to me. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Grant? Sure. I'm Grant Soderstrom, uh, president of the Baycrest Homeowners Association. I've had a home here in Chesapeake Beach for six years. Uh, last October, we saw all three of our buildings become islands again for the second time in 10 years. So we're all very, very interested in that. Um, the uh, like Jeff, my background is Navy. Both uh, of us came from the Naval Academy. I was submarines, nuclear engineering on active duty. I've got a master's in systems engineering and I'm the uh, vice president of a, a large defense contractor right now. Thanks, Grant. Uh, did I miss anybody else on the steering committee? Or, I mean, Larry and Wayne, I'm not uh, Larry. Uh, we know your background, but maybe not everyone does. I'll go over real quick. Uh, Larry Jaworski, I retired uh, professional civil engineer. I did environmental work. So my career was spent uh, addressing things like flooding, stormwater, water reclamation treatment plants, things like that. Um, I, I claim to be retired, but I'm not doing a very good job at that. I am in my second term on the town council. I completed training as a uh, certified climate change professional that was uh, undertaken under uh, the Maryland Climate Change Commission and the Association of Climate Change Officers. So I've got some background in, in what, uh, what the world is trying to do. And I think uh, one of the key things for me is I live in Seagate. So my personal concern is that my waterfront property becomes an island property at some point. So that's why I'm interested in moving this forward. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Larry. Is there anybody else I missed? If not, uh, just again, I appreciate everybody volunteering uh, to be on this. And uh, I look forward to getting to know everybody and sharing some ideas. And again, I think the most important part is you all, you know, that you care. I mean, that's why you're here. Nobody has. To, we all bring varied backgrounds, and I think that's important on groups like this that we have a, some varied background. Uh, it'll be great to get to know you over the next 18 months or so, and uh, I look forward to it. So stand by. I'll have, there'll be some correspondence coming out uh, in the not too distant future from me. Hey, hey Jeff, could I ask you a question? It's Jay. You, yeah, it depends on what it is, Jay. <laughs> good, to, good to see you. You spoke of backgrounds, so I'm looking at yours since this meeting started and I'm thinking, is that Chesapeake Beach? And if it is, where was it at? I'm on 28th Street. That is okay. the, 
Okay. Was that the day of the? Yeah, title? that was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was mid. That was probably mid morning. Yeah, I remember. I was down at uh, Brownie's Pizza. I, I was thinking that's, that looks familiar. Okay, I just was I was, curious. I, I was working in the kitchen that day, and I just kept watching. <laughs> and I made the good call at seven thirty that morning to move my cars up on the other side of Old Bayside because, uh, or Bayside, I guess, because I was like, it was coming in, it was coming over the wall pretty quick, even at seven in the morning. I was like, man, I'm gonna miss my window if I don't do something soon. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It was a, one of the few good calls I made. <laughs> that was a day, especially for it an was. unnamed event. It was. Uh, so, yep, yeah, no problem, Jay. Sure. Um, Jeff, before we wrap up, we probably, I, now that we're talking about this and um, before the construction gets buttoned up, I think we probably should have a field trip over here so I can show you guys what we did on the building that we're doing to help with um, the, the water coming up over the bulkhead. And yep. the time frame is kind of tight because we're really close to buttoning it up, but it would be really good for everyone to see what, what it is we, we, we did over there. Okay. Um, just throwing that out there. No, I love field trips. Not far, but you know. No, no, any time out in the field is a good day in my book. Yep. Just throwing that out there. All right, thanks. Chris, do you have anything else you want to share with us? Uh, I do not. I do not, Jeff. Holly, I know you are the coordinator of all things Chesapeake Beach, so I am uh, glad to have your. Uh, I'll call it leadership to this process because you'll help keep us all on track and uh, anything you want to share with the group? No, um, I, just that we will be gathering the information that we want to share with everyone and we'll definitely send out a file. I'll make sure um, contact information is shared as well for the steering committee members so you can communicate effectively. So I'll follow up. Great. All right. Thanks, Holly. Uh, Larry, anything, any parting words? No, sir. Thank you for your efforts and uh, you, you've got the wheel. All right, thanks. Hopefully we'll keep it steady. Thanks everyone. Have a good uh, Monday afternoon. Thank, Thank you everyone. Too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jeff.